In this section, we discuss the alkylation process. Alkylation is a conversion process used in petroleum refineries to maximize the production volume of gasoline. Unlike isomerization, which primarily objective is to chemically rearrange normal paraffins into isoparaffins in order to improve the octane number, alkylation does not bring a chemical rearrangement to address a quality concern, but rather to address a quantity concern. Since gasoline demand is continuously increasing worldwide, petroleum refineries have to cope with this increasing demand, and alkylation is the appropriate response to this challenge. The alkylation process takes light hydrocarbons, such as butene and isobutane, which are too plentiful in a refinery, but unfortunately cannot be fully used to make gasoline due to their high volatility, and turn these light non-valuable hydrocarbons into heavier hydrocarbons, less volatile so that they can be fully incorporated into the gasoline blend, thus increasing the production volume of gasoline in a significant way. To put it simply, alkylation is a conversion process that takes light volatile hydrocarbons and converts them into heavier hydrocarbons, compatible with gasoline blending. In this example, the reaction of butene and isobutane in the presence of an acid catalyst yields alkylate, an isoparaffin. Alkylate is an excellent gasoline blending component, as it has no sulfur, no olefins, and no benzene. In addition, alkylate has a high octane number and a low reed vapor pressure, the gasoline blender's dream. Under ideal conditions, alkylate consists mainly of C7 and C8 isoparaffins, but the butenes in the feed are so reactive that other not so high octane components form as byproducts. Fortunately for a refiner, the amount of byproducts is not high enough to undermine the attractiveness of the alkylation process. Let's now take a look at a typical process scheme of an alkylation unit. The typical alkylation plant consists of seven parts. These are the cooler, the reactor, the acid separator, the caustic wash, and three consecutive splitters. The feed, which is a mixture of butene and isobutane, is first mixed with an acid catalyst. Most refineries use liquid sulfuric acid as catalyst. The mixture is sent to a cooler, then introduced to the reactor. As the liquid passes through the reactor vessel, it encounters static mixers to ensure that the reactants are in contact in the presence of the acid catalyst. The mixture is then charged to the acid separator. The acid catalyst is drawn at the bottom and reintroduced back to the reactor. Eventually, some fresh acid is added to the system to compensate any potential acid losses. Hydrocarbons are then recovered at the top of the acid separator. At this level, hydrocarbons still have some traces of acid in them. For this reason, they are sent to a caustic wash where they are treated with caustic soda to neutralize the remaining traces of acid. Finally, Three standard splitters separate the alkylate from light products. The alkylate is recovered at the bottom of the debutanizer and, as discussed previously, constitutes a good quality blending component for gasoline make. The deisobutanizer, which is the second splitter downstream the reactor, is extremely essential to the alkylation process. This unit separates the isobutane that did not react and recycle it back to the alkylation feed. So this was a simplified overview of the alkylation process used in petroleum refineries to maximize the production volume of gasoline. In the next video, we will discuss the catalytic reforming process, another conversion unit used for gasoline make.